Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And here we are on Friday. I almost did the couch, but I don't know, just you know, I couldn't get there, Mod. But the laid back Friday couch will make a cameo in 2010. As a matter of fact, I'd like to reestablish it if I can. We're going to be talking about dessert wine today, and that excites me for many reasons because one, I have a sweet tooth, not as sweet as my mom and my wife's, but I have a sweet tooth. Two, we're talking about a dessert wine that I think is absolutely flying directly under the radar. Actually, way down on the radar. Banyul, Southwest France, Grenache-based dessert wines for all the ladies and the fellas out there that love the chocolate cake as a dessert, that love chocolate, just love it. This, my friends, is the dessert wine for your palate. Clearly, of all the dessert wines that are made in the world, Port, Late Harvest Rieslings, Sauterne, there is none that has the absolute beauty combo with chocolate that Banyul does because of the Grenache Noir grape. Now, Banyul, which became an AOC in 1936 um, and then created a Grand Cru status in 1962, um, make some of the most interesting dessert wines, in my opinion, in the world. They have to spend 10 months in a, in a barrel and 50% of the wine has to be Grenache um, for the regular AOC Banyul, which these two are. 75% if they go Grand Cru. Now the grapes that you can use outside that are permitted in Banyul, outside of the Grenache grape, are Carignan, Grenache Gris, and Grenache Blanc. Um, and so these two wines, one is 100% Grenache, one right over here has a little bit of Grenache Gris and Blanc. So that's really a little backdrop to, uh, to, the, uh, to the wines. Uh, I'm a fairly big Banyul fan. I, I think they're really vastly underrated and, um, and can bring enormous value to the table. This is a 750 and this is a 500 ml and for 23 bucks for a 750 of dessert wine, that's really almost unheard of. And 30 for a 500 ml, they tend to be fairly well priced as dessert wines go. Now, you're gonna notice something, they're red. So, you know, most people think of dessert wines as an orange, yellow, pale white coloring. These are red based dessert wines, hence the Grenache. Domaine de la Casablanca. 2007 Banyul, aged in, a hun in excuse me, aged in Bordeaux barrels, 100% Grenache Noir. Um, this is a very, very well priced Banyul. I, almost kind of scary. Like if I saw that, I'd be like, wow, that's like a deal. That's way too inexpensive. Uh, but Banyuls don't get too expensive, so it wouldn't surprise me either to see this price point. I'm being a little bit, uh, uh, maybe a little bit uh, picky. Yeah, they left, Mom. Stealth. Sniffy sniff. Can you turn that down? It's a little bit higher than I wanted to be. Um, on the nose, you're getting this really elegant kind of like milk chocolate meets like, there's almost like a coffee cake thing going on here on this nose. And then there's some bright kind of raspberry and strawberry flavor. So red kind of fruit coming through. A little bit of the alcohol brandy style thing coming through for sure. You get that with the higher alcohols of a dessert wine. Let's give it a whirl. Wine 16.5 alcohol, and it's um this great, great. Oh, I'm really hoping a lot of you guys ordered this on Monday and are tasting along right now, because I think you're gonna be on the floor in shock of the quality of what a red dessert wine can bring to the table. This is kind of the answer to the question of like, what wine should I serve my boyfriend or my girlfriend? They don't like red wine. It's too bitter for them. Mott, taste this. Dying to get your take on this. <coughs> Excuse me. Grenache is such an amazing grape variety. We just talked about it not too long ago with Chateau de Pop. Its flexibility is just staggering. And it is not known as a player in the dessert wine field by 99% of the drinking public, only by the nerds like me and uh, many of you. Uh, and it really, really does some great work as a dessert wine. What do you think? You like this? No? I'm not a giant fan of dark chocolate because that's what predominantly it is very delicious. Yeah. I mean, you love like Tokai and the white based dessert wines. Was, what was that one Italian dessert wine? Ricotta. 
like the Amaroni, this style. It was like similar, yes, it was red. That was really good. Yeah, that was re- even more th- thick. Yeah. Um, very similar. Great job, Mott. This is much more attractive in price. The Ricottas tend to be you know, $80 for a small bottle. 23 bones for this kind of dessert wine in a 750 size format. Break that down in dessert wine forms in a half bottle, which is most of the dessert wine consumption. You're talking about a wine that's 1150. I mean, tiramisu. Tiramisu. That's what, that's what it kind of remind me of. That's a good one. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that, I think, I think that's a very, very good analogy because you get that little brandy play in a tiramisu, and that's what you're picking up. That's a good one, Mott. You get a star. Bing. Okay, really good wine. Love the tannins. Very easy. Not unbelievable. Not the most complex band you'll ever have either because they can get really complex. Um, but good, solid stuff. Very serviceable. I'm going to go 89 to 91 points on this wine. I ranged it. I had to. I just can't really pinpoint it and I got to call a spadey spade spade in this show. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's got a great, great kind of you know tannic backbone. I can see a lot a lot, a lot of people really liking this. Now, the next wine is surprising me already just on color. Um, this wine is the 2006 Domaine de la Rectore, <laughs> Rectore uh, Cuvée Lyon Pass Banyul, 500 ml, 30 bones, uh, mostly Grenache Noir, but with a little bit of Grenache Gris and Blanc. That's how they kind of broke it down on their website, so I don't really know. 17% alcohol, but a little bit lighter in color than I would have expected. Intriguing. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Kind of tight nose too. Not much going on. Not as aromatic as the last one. There's a little bit of like, kind of almost minerality. Intriguing that I get a little bit of stone. Little light cherry and strawberry. Very similar flavors to the last one, but a little bit tighter and a little bit more faint. Let's give it a whirl. This has more alcohol. It's a little more off balanced, actually. The alcohol really comes through in this wine and um, is not joking. It's much more serious of a wine. There is a more complex attribute to this wine than the prior wine. However, the alcohol also out pops it. And this wine's just too young right now. This wine needs five to seven more years to settle down in the cellar, flesh out, put on some weight, you know, get a couple love handles going. I think it'd be a much better spot. <coughs> Excuse me. Wine gets me a little choked up. We on par so six here is maybe not. It's funny. It's no six. That's no seven. But obviously not as serious. A little bit easier to drink. Um, this parse wine is okay. It's solid, but the alcohol, uh, the off balance aspect of the alcohol is something that we can't totally deny here on the show. And we're viewing it at this moment in this time. And so um, did I even score the last wine? Oh yeah, eighty nine to ninety one. Um, you know, to me this really rolls in as an 86, 87 point wine. I'm not feeling it. It doesn't bring the thunder that I'd hope to. Um, and, and I'm gonna give it a pass. Uh, I, I, I definitely prefer the last wine, even though all my wine nerdness recognizes it's not as complex. It's just, but it's just doing a better job. It's just doing a better job at what it is. You know, it's like, you know, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company clearly is more accomplished in society financially and, and stature-wise than a great five-star chef, right? No question, financially and maybe in stature in some ways. But if you're the best five-star chef and you're better than an average, you know, top CEO, um, that's kind of where I get, maybe not the perfect analogy, but if you understand where I'm going with that, um, this wine just doing what it does better than this wine's doing what it does. And that's what it comes down to. I hope everybody has a great, great, great weekend. And great, great, I guess the Super Bowl's this weekend, Mott. Um, what's your prediction? I haven't really thought about it. I guess I'll take the Colts. I'm not going to go anywhere with the points. Got it. Uh, you know, I have a sneaky suspicion based on the fact that I didn't think we were a very good throwing team that you can throw on the Colts. And um, we have a great offensive line, though. I don't really know the Saints' offensive line. But um, we could have thrown a lot more in our game. And I wonder, you know, knowing Breeze and that throwing attack, I think they're gonna have some success. Uh, everything points to Colts, but I have a funny feeling, and the Saints aren't playing that well, but I have a funny feeling they're gonna be able to score. I'm gonna go 
I'm still probably gonna go 34, 26 Colts. That's a good guess. That's what I'm going with. As you can see, my demeanor just quickly changed, recognizing that I was one victory away. You, a little bit of me, changing wine world.